안녕하세요. Riding on the Korean Wave. Welcome to a brand new week with the Culture Wave. I'm Hwan so in Seoul. Explore with us Korea's culture from all aspects and stay up to date with K-entertainment, K-trends and K-musicals is one of our keywords today. We start off the week with our Monday co-host, Walter Lee. Hello, Walter. Happy Monday. Hello, so Happy Monday. And hello, everyone at home. Now, make sure you stick around for K-Enter because I've got some exciting news coming up. All right. And we're also joined by our Arirang News culture correspondent, Song Yujin. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday, Soa. Happy Monday, Walter. Happy Monday. <laughs> and happy Monday to all the viewers of the Culture Wave. I'm Song Yujin, Arirang News culture correspondent. So, Yujin, today you brought us a topic that personally I am very interested in these days. Mm -hmm. So, what are you going to cover today? Well, Soa, I'm a very big fan of this topic as well. Mm -hmm. So, a few months ago, uh, I went on a business trip to New York. And during my time there, I kind of covered a story on the growing presence of Korean musicals abroad, which of course includes Broadway. And this is of course uh, thanks to the efforts and hard work of many people. But I found that one particular individual has reached some remarkable milestones this year. So first take a look at my interview with him. Just like the lyrics, Shin Chun Su's career is roaring on. A trailblazer in Korean theater, he's the president and main producer of OD Company, one of the country's leading musical production companies. This year, he made history as the first Asian to serve as the sole lead producer of a Broadway musical. The Great Gatsby, a stage adaptation of F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic novel, has been running at the Broadway theater since April, grossing over a million dollars every week since its opening and even winning a Tony Award for Best Costume Design. And the momentum doesn't stop there. Next year, the production will make its West End debut. So what's the secret to crafting a musical that's set to perform at the world's two greatest theater capitals? The Great Gatsby is a timeless masterpiece with themes like the pursuit of love and struggles across social classes that feel so relevant today. We wanted the production to feel like one grand party, combining dazzling stage aesthetics with a powerful sense of tragedy. But Gatsby is just one chapter in Shin's career. Back at home, the beloved Korean production of Jekyll and Hyde is gearing up for its ninth season. Jekyll and Hyde helped me establish myself as a producer. At the time, it was seen as revolutionary, bringing together fresh talent from actors and staff to producers. For this 20th anniversary production, we focused on every detail, crafting it as a gift, not just for the audience, but for ourselves as well. With a repertoire that includes hits like Grease, Sweeney Todd, Man of La Mancha and Il Tenore, how does he decide which stories to bring to life? Classic literature has universal emotions that connect with everyone, and classic musicals have songs that leave a lasting impression. Sometimes I take risks with experimental works that push boundaries, but at the heart of it all is my commitment to creating high-quality productions for the audience. Shin also shared his vision for bringing Korean musicals to a broader audience. I remember being a British producer in 2001 who was surprised to hear Korean even had musicals. Now, with the growing cultural and economic influence, Korean musicals are gaining global attention. To keep growing, we must see the world as our stage and support young talent to create works with universal appeal. And he'll keep working hard to make this happen. My next goal is to stage a production with Korean actors performed in Korean. I believe musicals can transcend language, and this will showcase the talent of our actors and the excellence of Korean musicals. It's a decades-long passion that's driving Korean musicals to new heights on the world stage. So starting here in Korea and then heading to New York City and London, mm -hmm. so Broadway and now to the West End, I think uh, producer Shin, he's definitely a pioneer in Korean musical mm -hmm. uh, in the industry, but using for international viewers and for those who are currently in the U.S. or in uh, the U.K. or m maybe will make a visit there, mm -hmm. how can they catch The Great Gatsby? Right, so starting from Broadway, Gatsby has been on an open run since April 25th. And if a show is on an open run, it means it doesn't have a set closed date 
great. So it keeps going as long as there is an audience eager to see it. Mm -hmm. So you can check the show, show schedule on its official website and you can book tickets either in person, online or by phone. And as for the Western premiere, Gatsby will start its preview run on April 11th next year and will have a five month limited run until September 7th. And you can book tickets at the link you are seeing below. Mm. So it's a little different from here in Korea where we usually do have a sketch mm -hmm. schedule, right? So uh, Walter, you were going to say. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if the West End version also becomes a sellout success. Right. But uh, for musical fans in Korea, it sounds like there's plenty to look forward to uh, well, from what's left of the year and beyond as well. Hmm, you're absolutely right, because many say that Korea's musical lineup for the latter half of this year and next year is one of the best ever. That's because alongside Jekyll and Hyde, which you saw in my report, there's also the very first Korean production of Disney on Broadway's Aladdin the Musical. I think that you guys will be mentioning it in the latter half of the show. We will. So that's, that'll be running until next June. And there is also the last Empress. It is a Korean musical celebrating its 30th anniversary with a new production starting in January. So I just want to tell our viewers, if you have plans to visit Korea soon, be sure to add a musical to your itinerary. Great tip, Yuzin. And you know, um, I liked how the producer, producer Shin or President Shin mentioned mm -hmm. how language doesn't really seem to matter in, you know, uh, right. expanding into the world. So mm -hmm. I really hope that we are actually going to see Korean language, Korean musicals right. abroad because that's possible with K-pop too, mm -hmm. right? I mean, with books, it might might be difficult. You need to have that translation. But I think with music, I think uh, the music itself speaks for it. Definitely. So <laughs> thank you very much for that great topic, Yuzin, and hope to see you soon. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Time for K Enter News with Walter Lee. So, Walter, it is Monday. Lots of developments in the past days along with the weekend. So, let's start off with some updates with New Jeans and Adore. Yes, we do have a few updates, and it has, it has been a very long weekend when it comes to entertainment news. Now, it was announced on Friday that the K pop girl group New Jeans had terminated their contract with Adore, but had agreed to fulfill their contractual obligations uh, between Adore and all third parties prior to the contract termination. Now, on the same day, New Jeans actually appeared on Japanese TV's Asahi music program, Music Station, or M Station. Uh, that marked New Jeans' first official scheduled appearance since notifying, no, notifying a door on their contract termination. Now, the interesting thing is, and the question is, why didn't New Jeans take the legal route to terminate their contract with a door? Because experts do point out that a contract is generally considered terminated when one party, in this case we'll talk about New Jeans, uh, delivers a notice of cancellation. Now, but New Jeans, they didn't do that. Instead, the group only made a public statement saying that it has been terminated, the contract being. So from the New Jeans perspective, the contract is terminated. But Adore insists that the contract is still valid and will need to initiate a lawsuit to challenge the group's claim legally. Mm, let's hope that uh, everything will settle out well, but at least relieving news for the fans yes. regarding New Jeans activities in the future. Yeah. Now, Walter, we also have updates on the Tong Woo Song situation. Yes, right. Last week there was speculation on whether Tong Woo Song would address his ongoing controversy at the 45th Blue Dragon Film Awards. Uh, on Saturday. Now, during the awards show, uh, he presented and received the award for most popular film for a 12 12 of the day or sold air bomb, and also made a speech during the award, uh, uh, receiving the award. Now, during Jung's speech, he did say, I sincerely thank all the audience members. I stand here hoping that my personal matters will not cast a shadow over the achievements of 12 till the day and everyone involved in it. He then added, I deeply apologize for causing concern and disappointment to those who have shown me love and support. Uh, I will accept and carry all the criticism. Now, as a father, I will fulfill my responsibilities toward my son to the end. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, the controversy surrounds Jong, who was publicly announced as the biological father of 
Moon Kabi's son, who's a model. Uh, Jung knew about the pregnancy and but decided not to get married. Uh, there was also speculation that Jung may have been also seeing other women during that time as well. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Walter, let's end off uh, then with some heartwarming news on this rather chilly day. Yes, yes. So South Korean singer Im Young Ung, known for his song My Starry Love, has donated the entire proceeds from a charity soccer match to help people in need. Now, Im's agency, Mulgogi Music, announced on Saturday that Im donated the full 1.2 billion Korean won, which is over 850,000 US dollars, generated from ticket sales for the Hana Bank uh, charity soccer match. Now, that was held on the 12th of November uh, at Daejeon World Cup Stadium to the, uh, the charity's World Vision and Community Chest of Korea. Now, the charity match featured not only him himself, but also celebrities and former current professional so soccer players, including King Song Yong, as well as Lee Chong Yong, and as well as Park Ju Ho. Mm -hmm. Ki Song Yong, Lee Chong Yong, and Park Ju Ho. All right. Indeed, a very heartwarming story on the first work day of December, I have yes. to say. And I think it's not the first time that Im uh, is donating uh, such a, not that amount, maybe, but he has been doing on uh, many other occasions uh, before. So. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for those key enter updates, Walter, and stick around. Will do. Okay, and now it is time to go over to our AI anchor, Adi, for what she has in store in the world of culture news. Welcome to the Culture Wave AI News. I am Adi, here to guide you through the latest news and events in Korea's cultural scene. Here's our first story of the day. You've probably heard about South Korea's trailblazing artist Bing Namjoon, right? But have you seen his groundbreaking works firsthand? Well, now's your chance. The Busan Museum of Contemporary Art is currently hosting Bix retrospective featuring around 160 experimental and innovative works of the late artist, spanning his early years to his later creations. It is Korea's largest exhibition dedicated to Bix since his passing often referred to as the father of video art. He was one of the most influential figures in contemporary art, both in Korea and worldwide. The display runs until March next year, free of charge. The 15 Kwangju Biennale titled Hansori, a soundscape of the 21st century, concluded its 86-day run on Sunday with a closing ceremony. From its opening in September, the exhibition attracted around 700,000 visitors, curated by artistic director Nicola Burrio. The Biennale featured works by over 70 artists from 30 countries, centered around Pansori, traditional Korean musical storytelling art. The exhibition explored contemporary spaces through the medium of sound. An event recreating the Netflix original series Squid Game took place on the Champs Elysees in Paris on Sunday. Some 400 randomly selected fans participated in the famous hide-and-seek game from the 2021 show. The event was organized by Netflix France ahead of the release of Squid Game Season 2. There will also be a special screening for about 2,800 fans next Tuesday at a large theater in Paris, where the first two episodes of Season 2 will be shown in advance. Squid Game Season 2 will be available on Netflix starting December 26. That's all from me. Keep it tuned to the Culture Wave.
As year-end approaches, performances and movies that will warm your heart are lined up or are waiting to be released. Movies turned musicals and musical turned movies are adding some extra excitement this season, which we want to delve into today with culture critic Professor Ji Hyewon at Kyungi University. Welcome, Professor Ji. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So first off, let's begin with a musical mm -hmm. based on a movie. There is a noteworthy release here in Korea that will present the audience a whole new world right <laughs> exactly so recently about 10 days ago the one of the steady selling broadway musical aladdin has arrived in seoul so the disney's aladdin originally came out as animated film in 1992 so i'm sure you guys remember some of those songs you just the song the song and something something else like a friend like me and everything is like very very famous numbers and the stage musical was actually produced based on the animation, the Sesame animation by Disney Theatrical in Seattle. It premiered in Seattle in 2011, mm -hmm. and after several trial productions, the in the 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 stage musical finally opened on Broadway 2014. So based on the huge success, both the animated film and the stage musical, so Disney also produced the live action movie, the films in 2019, starring with Will Smith and Mina Massad and the Naomi Campbell, uh, Naomi Scott, I'm sorry. The film was a global hit and pretty success, successful here in Korea as well bringing almost 13 million audiences to the movie theaters. So now you can see Aladdin, Genie, and Princess Jasmine on stage. Mm. So the Korean licensed production of Aladdin finally opened at Charlotte Theater in Seoul, and the tickets are sold out until the end of January. And I was so, so lucky enough to start see the show last week, oh. but don't worry, it's, it will be running next to June, so you probably get a chance to see it. All right, and I also heard that uh, they're going to run uh, the musical in Busan in July. Right. So we right. have still many chances us to get some tickets, yeah, right? Of Definitely. Yeah. And what do you think makes the Korean version of the musical Al Aladdin unique? And does it reflect the cultural characteristics and emotions of the Korean audience? Yeah, actually, the Korean audiences love Disney shows, especially during the peak season, like holiday seasons, like now. And it's Disney musicals as large scale and spectacular and family friendly and happy ending shows and of course the Korean actors are amazing so each the each of the leading character is performed by three different actors so Kim Jun Su Park Kang Yeon and So Kyung Su are playing Aladdin and Jung Seong Hwa, Kang Hong Seok and Jung Won Young are playing Genie and Min Kyung Ah, Choi Ji Hye and Lee Seong Kyung are playing Princess Jasmine. So they are all fascinating and the audiences could discover various attractions from the different actors. And especially the famous actor Lee Seong Kyung made her stage debut from this product in this production and who actually look like looks like <laughs> Princess Jasmine. Right. And also the show has well localized to for the Korean audiences. So it's like the trans with the translation, audience friendly translation and hilarious local jokes. So it was super fun and people love it. Mm, I'm very much looking forward, especially uh, Lee Seong-kyung, as you mentioned, it's mm -hmm. her debut as a musical actress, but I did watch her sing Frozen's Love is an Open Door right. with uh, Ang Mew's, um, the, the, the male singer of Ang Mew. Right. Uh, so I loved that uh, duet. And uh, just quickly on a personal note, I'm mm -hmm. currently learning musical, and that's wow. why I watched uh, that specific performance by uh -huh. Lee Sung Young to, you know, also uh, kind of learn from her expressions as an actress right. on the screen as well as on the stage. She actually has the like a Disney kind of voice. Ah, right, right. That's what I thought <laughs> as well. Right. Uh, so, Professor Ji, let's. Now turn to cinema. Mm -hmm. There is a movie now currently in theaters that was adapted from a musical right. and that's gained lots of popularity here as well. So tell us more about that. That's right. One of the mega hit Broadway musical Wicked was recently released as a live action film starring Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. Wicked is based on the novel of the same name and a well-known musical to the Korean theater girls as well because the, it ha, uh, both the touring production and locally licensed production 
has been playing several times here in Seoul and several other cities. So Wicked opened on Broadway in 2003 and has been the best and steady selling show for the last two decades. So the producers actually wanted, wanted to adapt it into film for a long time and the audiences knew about it. So many audiences worldwide had been awaiting it as well. So since opening like about 10 days ago, Wicked Movie continued to break the box office record with earning more than $200 million at the domestic box office. And as of now, becomes the highest grossing movie of the old time based on Broadway musical in the United States. And at, as the first biggest worldwide stage to screen production. Mm. And here in Korea as well, it brought more than 1 million audiences to the movie theaters and critically acclaimed as well. Right, so really famous uh, worldwide. But um, taking a look at uh, how it is being uh, appealing to Korean fans mm -hmm. in particular, I hope there were also some specific strategies here uh, in Korea. Yeah, kind of the strategies, like marketing strategies and like bringing more Korean audiences to the movie theaters. So Wicked is, ha, in Korea has the, uh, has, re, has been released two different versions. One is the original version with the subtitle and the other one is the local language version with the Korean musical actors. Ah. Some of them have been already played the same character on stage, including Park Kena as Alphaba, Jung Seona as Glinda, Goon Sung as Fierro and Nam Gyeongju as Wizards. They all actually had the mm. experiences playing the same character on stage. And translating musical, actually translating musical theater like Wicked is not easy at all. It's because there are various layers of narratives and the, like uh, contextual or cultural barriers, especially for the lyrics. So the Korean language version of Wicked the movie used to took advantage of the stage production's translation, so which is actually proved, already proved to attract the audiences mm -hmm. to the theater. And Wicked Movie has used strong marketing strategies as well for the local audiences on the various social media platforms, including YouTube and like, like Instagrams mm -hmm. and, and in the, some local spots, including movie theaters, such as GV with the musical actors, the, who actually acted for the Korean language version right. and some like a pop-up stores so audiences are getting more interested in the movie version. Mm, I see. And what, uh, what's attractive about these sort of crossovers and do you expect to see more of this in the future? Oh, this kind of the like mo movie to musical stage. Yeah, right, musical right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, lots of stage musicals have been based on the films or the, the they have been actually translated to films, you know, but branding of successful works are very hard and very limited. So the product and the production budget are increasing very, very high and means, which means culture industry getting more competitive and the is riskier. So they, for the producer's point of view, they wanted to rely on some existing brand of the successful work. So that's why that's the one of the reason behind the adapting works. And for the audience point of view, they maybe they would like to watch the variation of the work they like. So it expands their cultural experiences and enjoyment as well. So I believe we may see more these kind of adaptations for instance, in next year, not only the other half of Wicked, but the live action versions of Disney's Snow White, Moana, and Frozen will be released. So we'll see, we're gonna see more of these kind of adaptations in very near future. That's quite interesting. So what do you think are some limitations or challenges that these adaptations face? Oh yeah, there are, actually there are successful works and were the flops as well. So the stage musical, I mean, stage, stage musicals and movies are very, very different media platforms. So, I mean, while theater goers are somewhat limited because we have to go there physically mm -hmm. and the tickets are expensive than movie tickets. So, and the, the movies are attracting broader audiences. So the producing film is much more expensive than 
producing the stage musical. So that's why the film producers brought like big name stars like Ariana Grande in Wicked or Will Smith in Aladdin. So I think the casting for Wicked is one of the reasons behind its success. So it's very, casting is one of the obstacles for the producers. And sometimes they, that's right, sometimes they made, make some changes adapting works. So adding extra numbers or some storylines. For instance, a Wicked movie, they actually contains only one half, one half of the real work on stage. So which is actually the producers added more scenes and the uh, like relationship of the characters. So, and you can see the, the other half the late next year. So, and moreover, the, you can hear the famous song Speechless only in the movie version of Aladdin. Mm. So like extra numbers or extra storylines. So they made the changes because they intended to attract the audiences different way. And it, in spite of the, these strategies, there are challenges though. So, the, and I think the biggest obstacle is audience's expectations because they know how the original work successful and they knew actually why they liked the show. So they have high expectations and that's one of the obstacles I, th I think. Mm. And keeping note of that, just uh, mm -hmm. briefly, what should Korea do to succeed in this, these crossovers in the future? Actually, in Korea, there are some musical, uh, stage musical productions based on the film, but there are not many of them the opposite way. We do have Young Ung, the hero, the, the stage musical transferred to the musical films, uh, which, is re which released two years ago, it, it, but that was the only one. So I think we have to learn more about how to produce it, how to create those kind of stuff from the other, like from the international productions as a case study. Mm -hmm. Good recommendation. Thank you very much, Professor Ji, for your insights today. Thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you, Walter, as always. Thank you. Thank you for spending the past half an hour with us on the Culture Wave and hope to see you again tomorrow.